Hi everyone, my name's Diabetor, and today I'm going to show you how to get the Moon Veil and get it up to plus 10 easily. The Moon Veil is a really strong, intelligent scaling katana, with a very powerful Ash of War. It's a great weapon throughout the entire game, but to get it you have to kill a Magma Worm in Kaelid, which can be pretty tricky. So today I'm going to show you how to kill this thing easily. We'll set up a build and I'll walk you through the fight so that you can get the Moon Veil as quickly as possible. Afterwards, I'll walk you through all the steps required to get the Somber Stones to upgrade the Moon Veil to plus 10. The main obstacle to that is killing the Godskin Noble, but I'll show you how to do that as easily as possible too. This comprehensive guide is meant for beginners, but experienced players can also use it to quickly set up a new build. To start off, we're going to talk to Kale at the Church of Ella, where we're going to buy three cracked pots and the crafting kit. We're going to use these later down the line in order to kill the Godskin Noble, because he's weak to sleep, and we're going to craft sleep pots to put him to sleep. We're also going to pick up a few throwing daggers here. We're going to use these for a couple things along the way. After that, we're going to head north, and we're going to go to the Groveside Cave at the nearby cliff. Inside the Groveside Cave, there's another cracked pot in here that we're going to make good use of, but there's also a bunch of wolves, so be careful of them. Generally, you can just drop down, grab the cracked pot, and then run past all the wolves before you get owned. You can also kill the boss there for an easy thousand runes. After that, we're going to keep heading north up the road toward the gatefront ruins. Here we're going to talk to Melina and get the Spectral Steed Whistle so we can summon Torrent, and we're also going to grab the map from the obelisk you saw there. Recently there have been a lot of new players buying this game, and I've seen multiple of them completely miss out on the maps and play through a significant portion of the game without realizing they can pick up maps so they can actually see where they are. So make sure you grab those maps. Anyway, in the cellar of the Gatefront Ruins we're also going to grab the Whetstone Knife. The Whetstone Knife is going to let us put Ashes of War on our weapons at any site of grace, which is going to be important for killing the Magma Worm, because we're going to use an Ash of War to kill him. Also, here's me showing the places that we've already been to, just in case you need a little help following along. Anyway, so from the Gatefront Ruins, we're going to head west up the road. There's a few stops we're going to make along the way up here. First, we're going to grab a Golden Seed, then we're going to go to the Stormhill Shack, then we're going to grab an item up on this hill right here, and then we can loop around the north and go through the woods to get to the War Master Shack in the clearing in the woods. There's a bunch of enemies through the storm gate here, but you can just run past them. Anyway, along the road, you're going to pass by the Golden Seed, so make sure you grab that. Then we're going to head up onto this little hill and grab the Stormhill Shack Site of Grace. And while we're here, we're going to grab a Stone Sword Key. We're going to need two of these by the end of this run, so make sure you grab this. After that, we're going to head northeast up onto the nearby hill with a troll on it. At the end of this hill, there's a basin that contains the Strength Knot Crystal Tear, which increases your strength by 10, for 3 minutes when you drink it in your Wondrous Physic. We're going to use that to increase our damage against the Magma Worm and make killing it a little bit easier. After that, you can just head north and drop off the cliff where it's a safe fall, and you can just head around to the War Master Shack. War Master Bernal sells a bunch of Ashes of War, and there's one in particular that we need, but it costs 1800 runes. So instead of killing enemies for it, what I like to do is come around the corner up onto this hill here, where there's a graveyard that we can loot for a bunch of golden runes. There's like 7 or 8 golden runes to pick up here, and there's also a bunch of these uh, rock clusters that explode after a few seconds when you get close to them. Um, and they actually hit pretty hard when you're at low level, so be careful of them. Um, but make sure you grab all the golden runes, because we're going to use a bunch of them throughout this run. So like I said, we need 1,800 runes to buy the Stormblade Ash of War. So if you hit the switch display mid button that you see on the bottom, for me it's X. Uh, if you hit that button, then you can see how many runes each golden rune actually gives you when you use it. So, there's one that we picked up that was worth 1600, and then I used a 200 one, and that gives us 1800, so we can buy Stormblade. We're gonna use Stormblade to kill the Magma Worm safely from a distance. It gets great damage, it gets good range, uh, just a generally awesome Ash of War. Um, when in doubt, use Stormblade is my rule of thumb. After that, we're gonna head to the top of this hill to the northeast of the War Master Shack. There's an enemy here that we need to kill for an Ash of War that we're going to use as a buff. Then after that, we're going to go down the cliff and into a catacombs over here, where we're going to grab a weapon we need to get some runes to level up, so we can actually get the intelligence required to use the Moon Veil. And after that, we're going to head further east. At the end of this hill, or plateau, cliff, whatever the fuck you want to call it, uh, there's a Godric Knight riding around on a horse, and when you kill him, he will drop the Golden Vow Ash of War, which is a buff that increases the damage that you do, and reduces the damage you take, uh, and you can put it on any weapon you want. And in my case, he also dropped a pair of pants, which is very nice of him, because my guy was cold. 
After that, if you follow the edge of the cliff north, then you'll see there's this little cliff that you can drop down onto, and you can take it as a shortcut to get down to the Death Touched Catacombs. Inside the Death Touched Catacombs, we're gonna go into this little semi-secret area tunnel hallway thing here, uh, and we're going to come around and grab the Uchi Katana, which has built-in bleed and is gonna be useful for farming some runes in a little bit. Then we're heading back down onto the road, and we're gonna keep following it east. Now, there is a quick little uh, detour that we're going to take here. Uh, so there's a set of grace at the bridge there where I have a marker. But on top of this cliff thing, uh, if you come over here, you'll find Alexander the Warrior Jar. And if you talk to him, he wants your help getting him unstuck from the hole that he's in. So once you get him out by hitting him with two charge attacks, he'll give you a piece of exalted flesh, which is a nice little temporary buff that you can use to fight the magma worm. I ended up not using it, but it's a nice thing to have. And then this is going to be a thing of contention. Um, he has a quest line, so, you know, a lot of people don't like killing him because he's your jar buddy. Um, uh, I missed there. Um, I was trying to be dramatic, but I, I missed because I'm an idiot. Um, but yeah, I recommend killing him while you're here because he drops a talisman called the Warrior Jar Shard, which increases your Ash of War damage by 10% while you have it equipped. Um, and that would be really useful against the Magma Worm and is also extremely useful on a Moon Veil build. So... I think that you should kill him. If you complete his quest line, then you get a couple more items, including an upgraded version of this talisman, but you can't finish his quest line until, like, nearly the end of the game. So I think it's better to just kill him now uh, and get that talisman and get more use out of it. Regardless of whether or not you kill Alex, head east across the bridge where you'll run into a nomadic merchant, and he sells another cracked pot for 600 runes, which we're gonna want. He also sells a few smithing stone ones, so we're gonna pick these up too for another 600 runes. So here we are with the merchant we just talked to. There's the Saints Bridge side of Grace that we grabbed. And so now we need to head south into the Mistwood of Limgrave. Obviously, we don't currently have the map of this area, and it's inside the Mistwood itself, which is where we're going. So in order to get down there, we're going to head south and drop down a couple of cliffs to get to a, a side of Grace called the Artist Shack. And you'll see it's right here next to this ruin that you see at the top of the ravine there. Um, you can't miss it because it's, you know, the very top part of the ravine. So if you just put a marker slightly to the east of that, um, then it's really easy to navigate over to the artist shack. Instead of cutting it out, I just sped up the footage here, um, you know, in case you want to follow along with the, the clip or something, but it's it's right there. It's really easy to get to. Um, so at the artist shack, there's another smithing stone, and there's a set of grace that we're going to grab. Again, as a refresher, that's where we came from, and here is the ruin that it's directly to the east of, so that's how you get to it. And then from the artist shack, we're going to head to the east to the end of the cliff over here. And we're going to follow the cliff to the north, where there's a graveyard that we need to loot for an important item and a few more golden runes. So you can safely drop down onto this lower cliff and then just keep an eye out for this rock that's down here so you can land safely. Um, I don't think there's any spots there that are really lethal, um, but you might take some fall damage. Uh, but yeah, so drop down, come over to the graveyard, and on this corpse you'll see there's the Fever's Cookbook 1. This is really important because it gives us the recipe to craft sleep pots, uh, which are going to be extremely important for killing the Godskin Noble later on, because the Godskins are extremely weak to sleep. As you can see, just one sleep pot's going to instantly knock him out, uh, and then he's free to attack uh, to our heart's content until he wakes up. There's a couple materials required to craft these, but we'll grab them as we go along. Make sure you grab all the golden runes in the graveyard, I cut that part out, obviously. And then if you look over to the northeast, you'll see that there's the Third Church of America there. So at the very end of this cliff, there's these tombstones, and you can use them to quickly and safely uh, go down the cliff instead of falling to your death. Uh, and then it's just a straight shot over to the Third Church. Inside the Third Church, we're going to grab the Flask of Wondrous Physic. Um, this is a reusable buff that you can use once per life or until you rest at a set of grace, it's really important. Uh, and then there is a sacred tier that you can use to upgrade your healing flasks uh, so that they heal more. From the third church, we're going to follow the road south. And just to be clear, that symbol there that I just marked, that is where the map is. You're going to see these things as you explore throughout the world. So make sure you grab the maps. This particular map is right next to the giant minor Erd tree that's there. So just run up to that and you'll see it's right on the road. Uh, you can go up to the Erd tree and there's a couple more crystal tiers to grab at the base of it. Uh, but we don't need them for this run. Uh, and then if you follow the road a bit further south, you'll come across the Mistwood Ruins. You'll know when you're here because uh, you'll hear the, the Blythe, the Half-Wolf um, howling. Uh, and inside the Mistwood Ruins, there's a bunch of Trina Zillies around this sleeping bear. 
So grab them and then just fucking run um, as the bear wakes up. Uh, you're going to head southeast further down the road until we get to Fort Height uh, at the end of the road. We need those Trina's Lilies to craft sleep pots, so make sure you grab them. Uh, and just here's a refresher of where we just were, so the Minor Erd Tree and the Mistwood Ruins, and we headed south to get over to Fort Height. There's a side of Grace to the west of it, so make sure you grab the Grace in case you die up here. Then we're going to go up into Fort Height, right outside of it, there's a Golden Seed, so make sure you grab that bad boy. Um, you saw I also grabbed a couple Blood Roses from the bush that was there, and inside the fort there's a couple more Blood Rose bushes and uh, an item pickup for three Blood Roses. We need those to make a Blood Grease, which we're going to grab the crafting recipe for in this little room. We're going to use the blood grease to uh, kill an enemy to get a bunch of runes so we can level up uh, to get the intelligence required to use the moon veil as soon as we get it. Uh, and then at the top of the fort, uh, there's a chest up here that contains the left half of the Dactus Medallion, which we're going to need to go up to the Altus Plateau in order to uh, get the moon veil up to plus 10. Uh, optionally, you can kill the uh, Godric Knight here, and he will drop the bloody slash ash of war. It's nice, um, I didn't use it in this run, but, you know, it's nice to have. Up next, we're gonna head to the pond right behind the Third Church of America, where there is a hidden teleporter that'll take us to the Bestial Sanctum and the Dragon Barrow, where there's a few more things we're gonna grab. The Dragon Barrow is a pretty high level area, it's pretty far away from where we were, as you're about to see. Uh, you know, pretty good distance from where we were, so be careful, uh, the enemies here will do a lot of damage to you if you're low level. But from where we come out, we're going to head directly south towards the local Minor Erd Tree. Uh, you'll see there's the giant bridge there that we're going to go across. Along the way, there's a golden seed to grab, so make sure you get that because it's got to come in handy. And then by the bridge, there's a site of grace you should grab because there's a dragon on the bridge. Um, you can pretty consistently just run past him without getting hit, which is what I always do. But obviously, you're going to want to grab it in case you die and so you can fast travel back here later uh, when you want to explore more. Anyway, behind the Minor Erd Tree, there's a Spirit Spring you can jump up. That brings us up the cliff to Fort Faroth, uh, and right next to Fort Faroth is Grail, the Mother of All Dragons, who we're going to kill in a little bit. Uh, but in Fort Faroth, we're just going to run past all the bats on the lower level. Um, they can't follow you up the ladder, so don't worry about them. And we're going to grab the right half of the Dectus Medallion, uh, which we're going to need later. Also in Fort Faroth, we're going to come onto the roof over here, and you see in the far hole, there's a ladder. That's where we need to go. So there's a bunch of bad guys that are going to spawn up there, but you can just run past them all. Be careful down here because there's that giant rat on the left that'll probably one shot you. Grab the golden rune and then jump across to this semi hidden area. Be careful of the even bigger rats that'll definitely one shot you. And down here, we're going to grab Radagon's source seal. I use the memory of grace to get out faster, but it makes you lose all your runes. Um, and there's a pretty good chance you'll die down there. So don't bring any runes in there with you, um, you know, spend them before you go down there. Anyway, Radagon Sword Seal gives you 20 free levels. It gives you 5 points for Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dexterity while equipped. So I'm going to use that so that I can meet the minimum requirements to wield the Uji Katana. And we're going to use that with the Blood Grease that we grabbed the crafting recipe for back at Fort Height in order to kill Grail for a bunch of runes so we can level up. Now, in order to craft Blood Grease, you need Blood Roses, which we already picked up at Fort Height, and you need Root Resin. So the best way to get Root Resin is come over to the Warmaster Shack, and then just to the east of the Shack, or of the Site of Grace, uh, there are these three Root Resins. So you can grab them, rest at the Grace, that'll make them respawn, and then repeat. And so farm as much Root Resin as you need, uh, and then we're going to craft a bunch of Blood Grease, and we're going to come over to the Great Dragon Grail, Use the Uchi Katana because it has a bleed uh, by default, and if you put Blood Grease on it, then that adds to the bleed buildup. It does. And you'll see Grail has a ton of health, but bleed will take off huge chunks of her health at a time every time you proc it. So you can just sit there and wail on her and make her bleed, and after a couple minutes, she'll die. Um, and then in this case, I accidentally pulled off a glitch. Um, if you're fast enough to run back to the site of Grace before she dies, then it makes her respawn and gives you the runes. Now, normally she doesn't respawn, but if you pull this glitch off the right way um, by just running back to the Grace before she finishes dying, then she will respawn and you can keep killing her for more runes. Um, and she drops 50,000 each time. So I'm going to use those 50,000 runes to get the minimum stats for the Moon Veil. The Moon Veil requires 12 strength, 18 dexterity, and 23 intelligence. So with Radagon's Source Seal, I only need to bring dex up to 13, and then the 5 dexterity points that we get from it means that I can meet that requirement. And then all the rest of the points that I had, I put into Vigor, 
um, so that I don't get one-shotted by things like the uh, Godskin Noble uh, or the Magma Worm. After that, you can talk to Melina at the Site of Grace, and she'll take you to the Round Table Hold. In the Round Table Hold, go to the North Wing, and you'll see the Twin Maiden Husks, who we're going to buy a couple items from. We're going to need 1,800 runes for this, so use any golden runes that you need in order to get up to 1,800 runes. And then once you talk to the Twin Maiden Husks, you can click Purchase, and we are going to buy the Longsword and the Mace. So we're going to put Stormblade on the Longsword, and we're going to use the Mace to kill another boss so we can get an item to upgrade the Longsword. While we're at it, you can go to any Site of Grace, go to the Ashes of War menu, and you can put Stormblade on the Longsword, which is how we're going to kill the Magma Worm. You can put any Ash of War you want on the Mace. Now we've got the weapon that we're going to use to kill the Magma Worm, and it's time to go upgrade it. The Magma Worm is to the east in Kaelid, but we're going to end up going north into Laurnia and then the Altus Plateau anyway, because that's where we need to go in order to get the Moon Veil up to plus 10. So I figure we'll go up north now, where we can get an infinite source of Smithing Stones and a bunch of Smithing Stone 3s, so that we can upgrade the Longsword a bunch and make killing the Magma Worm really easy and set up for going up there later on in the process anyway. So as you saw, um, north of the Stormhill Shack, you can just follow the road up across the Broken Bridge, and then there's a path you can take to go around Stormvale Castle, and that takes you straight into Lyurnia. Grab the Lake Face and Cliff Site of Grace, and then in the nearby Church of Irith, make sure you grab the Sacred Tear so you can upgrade your flasks, and then we're going to keep following the road west down through this hill, ravine, canyon thing, uh, and north into Lyurnia. And obviously, we're going for the map so we can see what the hell we're doing, so make sure you grab that. Along the way, you're going to pass by this Site of Grace and this Merchant. Talk to him and buy the Lantern from him for 1800 runes. Um, we're going to go to a couple dark places later, so we're going to need that. And you can also buy a few Smithing Stones uh, while you're here, which may save you some time later. Um, but either way, we're going to want to go up to Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel um, to get infinite Smithing Stones anyway. Also, uh, grab the map, be careful of the three Wraith Callers that are around it, um, because if they hit you, they can stun lock you, and you're gonna die. Uh, and then just to the north of where the map was, uh, and you can see here on the map, now that we have actually picked up the map, uh, to the north and a little bit to the west of it, uh, there is the Laskar Ruins and the Site of Grace that you can grab. Now that we've got the first map, we can see part of the Scenic Isle, which is that island on the left I just marked, and then to the east of it, there's a gazebo with an NPC we need to talk to. So go to the Scenic Isle, because there's a Site of Grace here, and it'll save us some time if we grab the Site of Grace. And then directly to the east of the Scenic Isle, there's a gazebo, which you can see right there in the middle of the screen, uh, where we're going to go and talk to Raya. So Raya, when you talk to her, she wants you to retrieve her necklace, which was stolen by some thug that she met. So directly to the northwest of this gazebo, um, if you go to the Scenic Isle, you can actually look to the northwest and you'll be able to see this shack. Um, it's called the Boil Prawn Shack. It's this little building. Um, you can't really see it here, but you see on the right, that's the Scenic Isle. Um, so, you know, it's just to the northwest of the Scenic Isle. It's right out in the middle of a, a clearing here, so it shouldn't be too hard to find the Boil Prawn Shack. Uh, so you're going to grab the Set of Grace, and you need a thousand runes to purchase the necklace back from this guy. You can also kill him, um, but I strongly recommend you don't, because he sells some good items uh, later on if you don't kill him. Um, but yeah, so buy the necklace for a thousand runes. And then right nearby, there's also three Train of Lilies, so make sure you grab those, because we're going to need them for the Godskin Noble. And while we're here, we're also going to head southwest from the Site of Grace to another island that's over here. It's got another Train of Lily, and it's got the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tear, which is going to increase our damage uh, when we use Stormblade on the Magma Worm later on. Bring the necklace back to Raya and get the Volcano Manor Invitation, and after that, we're going to head north and grab the map for Central and Northern Lyurnia. Uh, there's a gazebo here that we're going to go to. Um, you're going to see it, but that's what I circled on the map there. Um, there's a gazebo that has like three Smithing Stone 3s in it, uh, and that's going to be important for upgrading the Longsword. So head north to the map. Once you come to the, the big wide open area past the, the swamp, uh, you'll see there's this gazebo here, and it's surrounded by giant lobsters, and these giant lobsters will fuck you up. So be careful. If you approach the gazebo directly from the south, then they shouldn't get to you, or they shouldn't aggro on you. And also, if you go out like these stairs here, um, a lobster will jump up right in front of you. So when you come out of the gazebo, you want to go through one of the window parts of it, and go directly north toward the bridge. And then just to the west of the bridge, there's the map and the site of grace. So now that we picked up that map, you can get a better picture of wherever you've been. So that's where we got the Dex tier, Boil Prod Shack. So you can see all this stuff, and you see the gazebo in the bottom right there. 
We're heading north, but there's a couple things we're going to grab along the way. So first of all, in the middle of the Academy Gate Town that I just marked there, uh, there's a golden seed that we're going to pick up. There's also a set of grace up on the bridge there, um, but it's not necessary for this guide. You're going to want to grab it while you're in the area, uh, but I didn't bother to grab it. So here's the golden seed, and again, here's where it was marked on the map. Uh, should be really easy to find. And now we're going to go get a bunch more smithing stone threes. So first of all, if you come to the east side of the Yernia over here, you'll see these big rocks that are pointing out at like a 45 degree angle. If you put your cursor on the tip of one of them and go halfway down in between the two tips of the rocks, put a marker there and the, there's a smithing stone we're going to grab there. Then there was a gazebo among the trees where there's uh, more smithing stones we're going to grab. And then we're going to follow the lake up to the north and go over to that tunnel there which is called Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. So that first waypoint we placed leads us to this uh, group of Miranda flowers here. Right underneath the big one, there's a corpse in a chair that has three smithing stone threes on it. There's another flower nearby, so don't get it mixed up with that one. Um, it shouldn't be too hard to find the right one, especially if you marked it on the map like I told you to. Then head north to the gazebo in the swamp and grab three more smithing stone threes. And then we're going around the north cliff, uh, you know, following the lake to the north, and we're going to come to the Ray of the Caria Crystal Tunnel, which, as you saw, was right next to a wandering mausoleum there, so it shouldn't be hard to find. Uh, inside this tunnel, you're going to want to use the mace, because the enemies here are made out of rocks, uh, and so the mace, which is, a you know, like a hammer, a strike weapon, is really good at killing them. Uh, so even, I haven't upgraded this mace at all, and I'm doing, you know, two-shotting them, um, so you shouldn't have any trouble killing them. Uh, while we're here, we're going to grab a Somber Stone 2 and the Somber Smithing Stone 3, so... Uh, we should at this point have, I think, a two and a three, and then, you know, explore the cave because there's a bunch of stuff to find. Um, I just, like, skipped through it uh, because I don't want this video to be an hour long. Um, but you'll see there's a bunch of smithing stone threes to pick up inside this, so you need at least 12 smithing stone threes. And at the end of the cave, right before the fog wall, there's a somber stone one. So at this point, we should have at least somber stones one, two, and three. And then the boss is a Crystallian. So if you hit this thing with two charged heavy attacks from the mace, then that breaks its stance. And as you saw, like, you know, it just didn't give a fuck about those first two hits. It didn't get stunned or anything. Once you break its stance, it becomes weak as fuck to everything. And every hit that you hit it with will, like, stun it and, you know, make it stop doing any attacks it's doing. Um, so once you stance break it, it's super easy to kill. It drops the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing number one. So you can bring that to the Twin Maiden Husks and the Round Table Hold, and now they will sell you an infinite supply of Smithing Stone 1s and 2s. So we need 12 each of Smithing Stone 1, 2, and 3, so that we can upgrade the Longsword to plus 9. So, you know, use any Golden Runes that you might need in order to be able to buy these things, uh, and then we're going to go over to Hug, and we're going to upgrade them. Remember, don't forget to have picked up the Smithing Stone 3s inside Ray of the Carrier Crystal Tunnel, so that you can actually have enough of them to upgrade the Longsword to plus 9. Now we're just about ready to go fight the Magma Worm, so from the Third Church of America, we're going to come up to this tunnel over here that you see in Kaled. Uh, so the easiest way to get up here um, is there's a bunch of spirit springs going up the cliffs there, uh, so we're going to just jump up those to get up onto the top road there. Uh, and then if you follow the road to the east, you'll come to the uh, Shack of the Rotting there at the Rot View Balcony, where there's a site of grace that we're going to grab. Uh, so here, come out the church, go up the hill, take the spirit springs up. You can run past some wolves, but, you know, you just sprint past them. You don't have to fight them. Jump up the springs. Uh, and then once you're on the northern road, you're just heading east into Kaled. Go past the smoldering wall, and you'll come here to the Rot View Balcony. And then from the balcony... Instead of going around the road north, um, we're just going to head directly south. Uh, you'll see that there's like a rock that we can jump over, and that takes us straight to the cave. Uh, so that's right over here. So come down this. Before we go into the cave, there's this root here right nearby that has a scarab on it. Uh, and when you kill the scarab, it gives you a somber stone 4. So now we have somber stones 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we can upgrade the moon veil to plus 4 as soon as we get it. Uh, and then, obviously right here is the Gale Tunnel. Uh, it was marked on the map with the orange circle thing, so you should have no trouble finding this entrance at all. Uh, once you come into here, you need to get to the end of the cave before you can get out, because um, there's no elevator to take you out, and you can't fast travel until you kill the boss. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, inside the Gale Tunnel, I believe there are 11 Smithing Stone 4s. Um, I didn't grab them, but you should. 
and you can use them to bring the uh, longsword up to plus 11. And you see here, I ran past the boss room, and there's this door you can come through that leads to a site of grace. I didn't show it here in the video, but in this room, there's a tunnel that takes you out into Limgrave. So if you need to exit the tunnel before you've killed the magma worm, uh, then you can get out this way. Um, but yeah, so we're going to use the Sight of Grace to prepare for the uh, Magma Worm fight. Uh, so make sure you upgraded your flasks with the stuff we picked up along the way. And you're going to want to make sure you have at least a couple uh, blue flasks because Stormblade uses FP and we're going to need to be able to refill our FP. Also, in the Wondrous Physic, we're going to select the Strength tier and the Dexterity tier because Stormblade uh, scales with both Strength and Dexterity. We're going to make sure we had the Longsword up to at least plus 9. Um, you can use the smithing stone fours that we picked up here, uh, and take them over to Hugh and the round table hold and upgrade it to at least plus 11, uh, if you need more damage. Uh, make sure you have Stormblade on it, and you need any other weapon with Golden Vow on it. Doesn't matter what weapon it is, because we're not going to be attacking with it, you just need to be able to cast Golden Vow, uh, so that you can, uh, you know, get the buff from it. Uh, if you want, you can also consume that Exalted Flesh that we got from Alex. Um, you only have one of them at this point, uh, at least that I showed in this guide. Um, so, you know, it's an optional thing. You don't really need it, but it can help. Uh, and then if you have it, I suggest using the Warrior Jar Shard um, to increase your Stormblade damage by 10%. Um, but I decided not to use it because you might not have wanted to kill Alex, um, which is understandable. So before you go into the boss room, you want to drink your Physic, then cast Golden Vow and drink a Blue Flask so that you have enough FP to actually fight this thing. And essentially what you're going to do is you're just going to stay away from it, uh, lock onto its head, and hit it with storm blades. You saw I also uh, threw a bunch of throwing daggers there because it's I think it's fairly weak to pierce damage. Uh, and the throwing daggers do a ton of damage if you hit it in the head. I mean, like, look at that. It, it wasn't like a gigantic amount of damage, but you can throw these things fast and like it takes off like a nice chunk of health. Um, so you can use the throwing daggers that we bought from Kill at the Church of Ella. And, of course, there's also Stormblade, which should do a fuckload of damage to him. So just keep your distance and cast Stormblades at him. Stormblade has, like, limited range, um, so you can't use it from across the arena. But, you know, you can use it from a pretty good distance away, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about dodging his attacks. And you saw here I did a, a Charge R2 on him because I was close to his head, um, and I was able to get a Stance Break because I hit him with so many Stormblades before that. Uh, if you do a repost on him, while he's doing his wake-up animation, you saw there it didn't do damage because he's invulnerable during that animation. Um, so you have to wait until he's finished waking up. Uh, but yeah, so using Stormblade, you really shouldn't have that much trouble killing him. Um, I did it here pretty easily, and I finished him off the throwing dagger because he had 5 health left. Uh, so here's the build slash setup that I use for this. It's not really a build, it's just a longsword with Stormblade on it. Uh, but hey, it fucking works, right? And now the Magma Worm is dead. And we got the Moon Veil. Now it's time to go and gather the rest of the Somber Smithing Stones so we can bring the Moon Veil up to plus 10. If you need additional help with this, I have a dedicated guide that has an alternative method for doing this uh, that's also quick and easy to set up. So I suggest you check that out uh, if using the Moon Veil to kill the Godskin Noble isn't working for you. So after using the Somber Stones we already have to bring it up to plus 4, I went back to the Scenic Isle Site of Grace, and as you can see there's a mushroom right next to the Grace, um, so I just farmed a bunch of mushrooms because we're going to need to make some sleep pots, and that requires mushrooms. If you need more Trina's Lilies, then if you head to the west here, uh, underneath the enormous plateau thing, um, there's the Albanaric Village, and in the Poison Swamp around the corner from it, there's uh, like 13 Trina's Lilies if you need more of them. After that, we're going to go back to Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, and we're going to take a shortcut to get up to the Bellum Highway so that we can go up to the Altus Plateau. So, at the base of this cliff, there's a Spirit Spring here, and if you jump up it, it takes you super high up, uh, and you can just jump straight up onto uh, the cliff where the, the highway is. Uh, so, you know, here's where we are now, and we're going to follow the highway north uh, up to the Grand Lift of Dectus. Make sure you have both halves of the Dectus Medallion that we got from Fort Height and from Fort Faroth earlier, uh, so that you can actually use the lift. Along the way, you're going to pass by the Bellum Church, where there's another Sacred Tear you can grab. Uh, there's also a Sight of Grace here, but I didn't activate it. And then what we're going to do is follow the cliff uh, to the north, so that the trebuchets on the road don't shoot at us. If you stay next to the cliff, then they can't shoot at you. 
Uh, and so follow that up, grab the Sight of Grace at the Grand Lift of Dectus, and we're going to make a quick detour to set up um, for the Godskin Noble fight uh, and to do Vare's questline later on so we can get the Somberstone 10. So from the Grand Lift of Dectus, we're going to head directly south and we're going to follow this cliff up here. You see that skull that I just marked? That's the Frenzy Flaming Tower. Um, it's going to attack you with madness as you're approaching it, so we're going to need to disable that once we get to it. Uh, and then after that, we're going to head south to where there's a site of grace. So here's the Frenzy Flaming Tower. As you're approaching it, you see it's causing madness buildup on me, and it's also uh, burning my health, if you look at my health bar. Um, so be careful of it. If it procs madness, it takes off a big chunk of your health. Uh, be careful not to die. There's a spirit spring here all the way on the east side of the cliff. Uh, and if you come up to it, you can wait for the tower to turn off for a second, and then you can jump up and land on the tower. Once you're inside the tower, you should be safe from the fire. If you have fire pots, you can stand on top of this chest and throw them up at the floor to kill the six guys that are up here. I didn't have enough stuff to make fire pots, so I just climbed up and used the moon veil. Once all six of these guys are dead, the tower will be disabled permanently. So even when you rest at a grace or something, these guys don't respawn, so you don't ever have to worry about the tower ever again. Uh, after that, just head a little bit to the south, and there's a set of grace here that we're going to grab. And then from the grace, you're going to head south towards the minor Erd tree, and you can jump down from the cliff here. Uh, and we're going to kill the Erd tree avatar here to get the magic shrouding crystal tier, which will increase the magic damage we do and make it easier to kill the Godskin Noble at Volcano Manor so that we can get the Somberstone 7. To the north of the tree, there's a bunch of the ancestral follower, um, bull, minotaur guys. Uh, and they will fight you alongside the tree if you get too close to them. So I like to hit the tree with a throwing dagger after I've cast my buff uh, and used the uh, Flask of Wonders Physic. Um, hit it with a dagger and lure it away from the follower guys. Uh, and then it's a really, you know, this thing has a really simple moveset. Um, so just hit it once or twice, then dodge and repeat. Uh, and it should be pretty easy to kill, um, especially with the plus four moon veil that we have. Um, you see, I'm, you know, just shredding it pretty quick. Uh, so you shouldn't have too much trouble with this thing. When you kill it, it drops three crystal tiers. Uh, the main one that we're here for, obviously, is the Magic Shred and Crack tier, which increases your magic damage by, I think, 20% uh, for three minutes when you drink it out of your Wondrous Physic. Um, so that's going to come in handy. Then we're going to go back up to the side of Grace by the Frenzy Flame Tower, and we're going to head west through the Frenzy Flame Village and up the hill to the Church of Inhibition here. Now you see I got off Torrent because I'm getting invaded by an NPC, uh, and so it kicks you off Torrent. You can't use Torrent during invasions. Um, and he spawns on the hill here. He can be pretty tough, so I like to just sprint past him and grab the Sight of Grace inside the church. Um, we're going to need to come back here later, which is why we're grabbing this. Uh, so I like to grab the Sight of Grace. So even if he kills you now, you will respawn here at the church. Um, and he doesn't invade again until you go out the front door of the church. Um, so even if you die, as long as you've grabbed this Grace, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can just, you know, pick up your runes and then, uh, you know, come back here or whatever. Uh, but yeah, so kill him. Uh, that's optional. Kill him if you want. Grab the sacred tier that's there. And then we're heading back to the Grand Lift of Dectus, which you're going to take up to the Altus Plateau. You will be greeted by Raya if you had the Volcano Manor invitation from her. Before you talk to her, come over to the north and grab the Site of Grace because we're going to need to come back to the Altus Plateau later. Then come back and talk to Raya and she will take you to the Volcano Manor. Grab the Sight of Grace here, and then we're going to talk to Lady Tanith. Join the Volcano Manor. It doesn't, like, lock you out of any quest or anything like that. Uh, and she will give you the Drawing Room Key, and we will use that to go through the first door on the right inside the hallway. Uh, we're going to be going to a dark area here, so this is what we need the Lantern for. So, you know, turn on your Lantern. And then this wall, if you walk into it, will disappear, and it'll take you into this dungeon. Go through the dungeon past this Bloodhound Knight. Um, you're going to want to sneak past him because he can do a good amount of damage. Grab the Sight of Grace, and now if the Bloodhound Knight kills you, then you just respawn right here. Uh, and then using the Moon Veil, I just hit it with a charged heavy attack, and then immediately with the uh, Transient Moonlight Ash of War, um, and that did a stance break, uh, and then it just took a repost and one more hit to kill it, and it drops the Bloodhound Claws, which we're going to be using in a second. Uh, so we need to go up to the Temple of Igle up there, so I'm going to skip through the entire prison town. Um, you can, you know, explore it. There's a bunch of stuff to find here, but I'm just going to skip through the entire thing. So if you drop down this roof to this cliff here, uh, you can go down to the lava uh, and then come across these sunken buildings. Uh, make sure you have the Bloodhound Claws equipped because they have the Bloodhound Step Ash of War. 
So the lava does damage to you and it slows you down. If you roll, then you move slightly faster, but it's even faster if you use Bloodhound Step. Um, so that's what we're using. Keep an eye on your health because I nearly died there because I wasn't paying attention. Um, but we're going to use Bloodhound Step to get through it. And then we need to go up these stairs that are here to go up to the temple. But first, we need to come around to this building. Uh, if you come around the corner here, on top of it, there is a somber stone six. And now we can go up the stairs towards the temple. There's a man serpent with a whip up here, so be careful. I like to sneak past him. You can just take this elevator up. And then before we go up the stairs to the temple, make a right and come and grab this somber stone five off of the corpse here. So now we can upgrade the moon veil to plus six because we got the somber stone five and six. And instead of going directly into the temple, activate this bridge here, um, which has a shortcut back to the prison town church. And be careful of the fucking Black Flame Monk, because apparently he can hit you um, right before the cutscene starts, if you're not lucky. So the bridge leads us back to the uh, Sight of Grace and the church that we grabbed a minute ago. Uh, so we're going to use this uh, to set up for the Godskin Noble fight. Uh, so in the Wondrous Physic, you're going to want to use the Magic Shrouding tier and the Dexterity tier. Uh, because the Moon Veil scales mainly with Intelligence for the magic damage it does, uh, and Dexterity for the physical damage it does. Uh, so we're going to be using that. Obviously, we want any weapon with Golden Vow on it, so we can cast that buff. And make sure you go use those Somber Stones we just picked up to upgrade the Moon Veil to plus 6. Uh, we're also going to need a bunch of Sleep Pots, so we picked up 5 Cracked Pots. You should be able to craft at least 5 Sleep Pots. Uh, if you need more mushrooms and more Trina's Lilies, um, then you can go and pick them up in a bunch of spots. Uh, but five should be more than enough to do this. Uh, and then, like I said, we've got the Moon Veil, we've got something, the Golden Vow. We've got our Wondrous Physic mixed with the Magic tier and the Dexterity tier. Uh, and optionally, you can use something like the Warrior Jar Shard if you have it, uh, because that will increase the damage that you do with the Transient Moonlight uh, by 10%. Uh, but again, I didn't use it because I assumed you don't want to kill Alex. So the first time you come into this church, you can go up to about the second pew um, before the Godskin Noble spawns in. So you can cast your buffs inside the church. If you've already started this fight before, then you'll have to do it outside the fog wall. Because as soon as you walk through the fog wall, uh, the Noble will already be spawned in. So what you're going to do is drink your Physic, cast Golden Vow, Drink a blue flask, that's really important, and then hit this fucker with a sleep pot. You might have to dodge an attack, um, but then you can hit him with the sleep pot during his punish window. And then you're going to hit him with either uh, Transient Moonlight or a Charged R2s uh, to get a stance break on him before he wakes up. Uh, and then hit him with the repost and just repeat. Uh, after he wakes up, hit him with a sleep pot, Transient Moonlight. Uh, make sure you keep drinking blue flasks so you have enough FP to actually cast it. Uh, and you can use charge attacks or charge heavy attacks uh, and that'll break his stance. Uh, and then here you see he's doing his phase transition um, once he gets below 50% health. So he decided to do his roll. Um, I was able to successfully dodge it there. Um, but even if you don't dodge it, um, as long as you don't instantly die, he should fall asleep if you hit him with a sleep pot beforehand. Um, so that should be pretty simple. It took like 30 seconds to kill him. I'm using the plus six moon veil. And now we are free to go and grab the somber stone seven, eight, and nine. I mentioned near the start of the video that we would need two stone sword keys by the end of it. Now there's one that we can pick up inside the volcano manor. So you need at least one more. We picked up the one at Stormhill, but make sure you have at least one of them for this part. Uh, because if you don't, then you're gonna end up wasting a bunch of time. Um, so I'm just gonna speed through uh, to where we get it here. Um, it's a pretty linear path, so it should be easy to follow. Um, I decided to go across the lava here, and so, you know, use Bloodhound Step to make that easier, and be careful not to get owned by the Abductor Virgin. I think that Scarab dropped a Somber Stone 5, though I'm not sure. Um, but inside this room that we came into, uh, there's this item here, and it is a Stone Sword Key. Um, so now we have two Stone Sword Keys. Again, I cannot stress, make sure you have two Stone Sword Keys for this part. Uh, and then you can just go up the ladder here and run past the man serpents into this big uh, stair room. This is the stair room of Volcano Manor where they put all their stairs. Uh, and if you go up the stairs behind you, there's a hallway up here where there is a stone sword key door. This requires two stone sword keys, so make sure you have two. Uh, and then you're going to navigate your way down the cages here uh, through the sex dungeon. Uh, be careful of this jump onto the rafter there. Be careful not to get owned by the Albanaric Archer, or Albanaric Mage, excuse me, that's across the way. Uh, and when you drop down here, uh, at the very bottom cage, you'll see there's another cage down below you. Uh, so that's where we're going to drop down onto, so we don't take any fall damage. 
So there's two ways you can go here. If you go to the east, then that takes you into a room with an Ash of War, and it leads you back to uh, Tanith's drawing room at the Volcano Manor. But we want to go west, so make sure you're oriented in the correct direction. We want to go west here. Uh, be careful not to gra grab by those uh, Albanaric guys, because they will fuck you up if they grab you. Uh, and right behind the Abductor Virgin outside, there's a Somberstone 7. After that, we're going to head back over to Fort Faroth in the Dragon Barrel. We're going to follow the road to the west to the map. Uh, and then just north of the map obelisk is the Divine Tower of Caelid, where we need to go. Uh, so that is, you know, the the gigantic fucking tower that's right there. So yeah, you shouldn't have a hard time getting there. Um, so yeah, grab the map so that you can see where you're at. Uh, and then you're going to go directly north of it. Uh, there's this root here that has a uh, scarab on it. Uh, so kill the scarab. It explodes when it dies, so be careful of that. And it drops the somber stone eight. Uh, and then if you head to the southeast, you'll see there's a little path you can take down here. So make sure you jump down to it from a safe height. Uh, and if you follow it down, then you will find a circle of chairs with a somber stone nine. So now we can get the moon veil up to plus nine. Um, this can carry you through pretty much the entire game. Um, but, you know, we're doing a plus ten video, so uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so we need to do Vare's quest line to get to Mogwen Palace. And Vare wants us to kill any shard bearer. So I always go for the easiest one, which is Godric. Uh, using a plus nine moon veil, you should be able to fucking massacre, Margit, uh, steamroll your way through Stormvale Castle. Uh, and then once you get to Godric, uh, he's he's a pushover even with a fucking regular weapon. So using a nearly maxed out moon veil uh, is gonna make him comically fucking easy uh so you should really have no time or uh, no trouble kicking the, their asses at all um especially with all the the buffs and stuff that we picked up along the way uh so once you kill these idiots as seen here uh and here's my build in case you need it for whatever reason uh you're gonna go back to the round table hold and you're gonna make a right from where you spawn and come into this room and talk to Enya, uh and she will you know tell you about the two fingers whatever now that you've talked to Enya. You're gonna head over to the Rose Church in Lyernia of the Lakes. So from the Boil Prawn Shack, which is why we grabbed that side of grace earlier, uh, if you come to this western ruin up here, so there's three fallen ruins. The one all the way on the west uh, has another side of grace, uh, and then the island to the west of that has the Rose Church on it. So we need this side of grace because we're gonna have to come back to the Rose Church a couple times, and this is the closest side of grace to it. Um, so make sure you grab that. And then once you go to the Rose Church, you will find Vare here, and he will give you a bunch of festering bloody fingers, and he wants you to use them to invade other people in multiplayer. Now, since we're a low-level character with an area max level weapon, um, it's going to be pretty much impossible to find invasions. So instead of doing that, we're going to head over to the Altus Plateau, and we're going to kill an NPC here, which will progress Vare's quest line in the same way. So in the Altus Plateau, you're going to follow the road north, uh, and that'll take you up to the map uh, that you saw I just grabbed. So here's where we are in reference to the uh, Grand Lift of Dectus and that Site of Grace that we grabbed earlier. Uh, and now you want to head up to these ruins here where uh, there is the invasion sign for the NPC that we need to kill. Uh, so I found that the fastest way to get up here is to follow this path here past the Second Church of America. Uh, and then there's a Spirit Spring that'll take us up to the Rive Blood Ruins. Uh, so you can just follow these footsteps. Just be careful of the cliffs there. Uh, because the uh, some of them are like lethal falls, so you need to find a, a safe spot to drop down. Uh, but once you go past the church, just head north and you'll see that spirit spring, jump up on the cliff, and then it's a straight shot over to the Rithe Blood Ruins. In the ruins, there's a bunch of bleed dogs, so be careful not to get murdered by them, uh, like this one. And in this building that I had marked on the map, you'll see there is an invasion sign, and you can use a festering bloody finger to invade Magnus. So, you don't actually have to kill him, I'm told. Um, you can just invade him and die three times, um, so don't be afraid to die to him. Uh, but if you kill him, he drops a couple things, um, and I like to kill him, so that's what I did. Uh, the R1 for Man Transient Moonlight uh, is really, really good against him. Uh, but anyway, so once you've done that, go back to Vare, and he will give you the Lord of Blood's favor, uh, and he wants you to dye it with a Maiden's Blood. Now, if you'll remember, we went over to the Church of Inhibition earlier, and there's a dead maiden there. So grab the clothes off her body, and then you'll have the option to dye the cloth with her blood. So do that, and you'll now have the blood-stained uh, Lord of Blood's favor. Bring it back to Vare, and he will offer to anoint you as a knight in the Mogwin Dynasty. Uh, so accept. He'll give you the Bloody Finger, which is a multiplayer item. And if you talk to him again after that, he will give you the Pure Blood Knight's Medal. 
And so you can use this in the tools section of your inventory and it will take you directly to Mogwin Palace. So we are going to use it, go to the audience grounds, bada bang, bada boom, we're in Mogwin Palace. And now it's just a straight shot up the mausoleum uh, to where the Somberstone 10 is. Um, so I just sped up through the footage so you can see where I'm going. This is a high level area, so if any of these enemies hit you, um, they'll do a pretty good amount of damage to you. Especially once you get up into this dark area, um, there's these sanguine nobles here that'll fuck you up. Um, and they can also throw daggers at you, which is why you see me doing a, a serpentine pattern there. Um, so be careful of that. But anyway, so at the end of this, uh, you're gonna see this audience of, uh, blood albinorics and a sanguine noble up here. I like to come around the side here, and if you have throwing daggers, you'll see there's a pillar, um, behind my head there. So what I like to do is stand here, and I line up the top of my head with the top of the pillar, like such. And then if you go up just a bit more past that, uh, you can throw a throwing dagger and that'll hit the pillar and distract the sanguine noble so you can run up behind him, open up the chest and grab the somberstone 10 and then get the fuck out of there before he turns back around and murders you. And congratulations, you now have a plus 10 moon veil. This only took me about two hours to do, so uh, with this guide you should be able to do it pretty quick. Uh, I hope you found that helpful. Please leave a like and consider subscribing. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you later.